Okay, thank you so much, Josh and everyone. And um, it's a real honor to be here and um, just see what has transpired in 30 years. And, um, you know, it just doesn't seem long ago, but on the other hand, it really has been, uh, you know, 30 years of, of hope and progress. And I think the, the exciting news is that we are indeed making great progress and, you know, we'll try and share some of that with you um, today. Um, so 30 years ago, the brain imaging, which is MRI really almost exclusively at that time, was largely just structural. And I remember when we started this, um, I <clears throat> worked with a colleague of mine, Pat Keslak, and we looked at the uh, images from MRIs and <clears throat> realized that the target was really the hippocampus, but nobody had quantitated that. So we started and uh, really began to quantitate that, uh, <clears throat> you know, which was really a, a step. And now there's, as we will hear later on, the uh, progress in brain images is truly monumental. Uh, <clears throat> the transgenic mouse models were still at an early stage with uh, uh, TG2576 uh, developed by Karen Chow and also the 3X TG developed by our UCI's Frank LaFerla, which we're very proud of. Um, and those have continued and we'll hear more about that. Uh, one of the uh, startling facts, there was no real hypothesis on the cause of decline. Although in 92, uh, Hardy and Higgins uh, proposed this idea called the amyloid cascade hypothesis. And that at least provided a unitary idea that people could mobilize around and begin to test and refute it and support it and so on. And so that was a really helpful step because it put a conceptual um, a thread behind some of the individual data. But startlingly, there was no standard criteria for AD diagnosis. So as a scientist, you know, you'd say, well, how do I know that I'm dealing with a person that actually had Alzheimer's disease or has Alzheimer's disease? And, um, you know, you, you can't do research when you're not sure of the source and the characteristic of the, t of the individuals. Well, <clears throat> that has subsequently uh, been changed and refined and refined and refined. So now there is general agreement. There's still some issues to be sure, but um, it's moved along very nicely. Um, over the years, UCI has built great strength in uh, <clears throat> The AD research, and uh, <clears throat> what we need is a well-characterized patient population who are willing to participate in research. And, um, you know, that may seem obvious and simple, but <clears throat> when you're looking out from UCI at the general patient pop uh, the general population of individuals around, you know, it's not so, thing hard, not so simple because you have to have a whole infrastructure uh, staff to, to help maintain and organize them. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, so even willingness is not adequate. But that's certainly the step, and that's, that's come a long way. Uh, and we also, in order to do um, analyses, we need postmortem samples for brain tissues for cellular and molecular studies on AD brain. And that may seem okay, fine. You just call up your, I, I, so the first, my first attempt on this, because I sort of wanted to not just work on animal models, but I thought I wanted to see what happens in the human brain, uh, because after all, you work on animal models to learn more about the human brain. So why not do it directly? Well, <clears throat> with postmortem tissues, you have that option. But, <clears throat> um, you know, I tried to get some from other people around and, and one of the last ones I got from a nearby friendly University of California. And when I got the sample and opened it up, it was just ice. There was no tissue whatsoever in the whole sample. So that, one, that did it. I said, okay, you gotta do it yourself now. So <clears throat> essentially, 
you know, we started collecting uh, samples of AD tissues initially uh, from the coroner's office, I must say. <laughs> and then finally we established uh, a clinic population where we uh, uh, characterized the patients. Uh, <clears throat> the, those that were willing signed up for autopsy and then we collected the brain so we had well characterized individuals that were suitable for rigorous research. And that was a huge step forward and that um, is really now become the norm in the field. But we did some of the first studies on that. And <clears throat> you need an infrastructure that, supported, that supports all this because each one requires a number of functions and we sort of know a lot about it, but it, you have to have the ability to organize people, uh, subjects, tissues, consents and all of the issues that are associated with human research. And then we have to parallel that with animal models to be rigorous. And initially, <clears throat> we didn't have the strength at UCI to do this on our own. So I uh, knew some of the investigators at uh, <clears throat> other universities. And eventually, we partnered with uh, USC uh, where Tuck Finch and I were good friends. And so we decided, along with initially UCLA, to form a partnership and to try and get an Alzheimer's Center. Well, UCLA uh, decided not to go with us, uh, but Finch and I put together an application and we got it funded. And I must say that we were sort of, we, we, we quote, uh, got acknowledged in the grant, but we ever put for years, we didn't get any money, <laughs> which is a little bit of a problem. <laughs> and then finally, I pulled that off and we got money. And then eventually, um, the center got too large and um, so we split off. Uh, and I remember the phone call when we uh, you know, had the issue of the splitting off and that I, was, I got a call from the NIA from uh, an individual, Tony Phelps, and he said, Carl, I want you to apply for your own center. And uh, we, the USC combination has gotten too big and too uh, wheely. And so, and, and by the way, in two weeks, we'll need your application. <laughs> yeah, I said, well, anyway, I got it in, but it really didn't get funded the first time, but we made it the second time. And so that started uh, our Alzheimer's Center march. And that, that grant has helped pull people together and provide infrastructure so we could be successful. Um, and then also, <clears throat> one of the critical things is to um, um, so <clears throat> we um, also really needed when and then. After we sort of got into position, I realized that, look, the Alzheimer's Association and UCI and the university is interested in the same thing. You know, helping to find a, a cure and work with patients to make their life better when they have Alzheimer's disease. So why are we doing this indiv individually? Why don't we work together? So <clears throat> I um, called, uh, the guy who was at that point the chair of, uh, or the uh, director of the Alzheimer's Association, Ken Barnheiser, and uh, approached him about this. And after several meetings, we decided that this would be really kind of mutually beneficial and we could do things together and learn from each other. And one of the things was to build this conference. So uh, initially, Kent um, and the Alzheimer's Association and UCI put on the first conference, uh, which is, uh, was 30 years ago. And I, I, I get a kick out of this, because Kent was always a sharp dresser. And the 30 years ago, I think what's interesting is like some of my ties, the, you, you, they, they look good at the time, they go out of fashion, but they come back in again. And so, you know. Uh, but Kent was really great to work with, and uh, you know, and, a, and an innovator. Okay, this was the brochure actually from our first conference. And uh, 
You know, it was a little bit anemic, I think, in retrospect, <laughs> but it got us going. And uh, we, we evolved, and at least from the conference brochure, we could do it really quickly. The program didn't do it as fast as the, as the conference brochure, but we've had this conference now uh, continuously for 30 years, and I think it's become an organizing and a, a, a fun event to cross-fertilize both the efforts in the community and the efforts at the university and so on. So I'm really actually proud that we've uh, accomplished that. In the early days, um, we, uh, whoops, I'm sorry. In the early days, uh, we built the, in, in the supporting infrastructure. We finally established a tissue bank and um, we then began to deal with space and personnel. And uh, that was a, a rather interesting issue because um, I had to argue with the university and finally get them to give up space. Uh, we were a little crowded to say the least. And uh, sometimes we had to find space where we could. I remember at one point I was actually given a, a closet <laughs> just to help people. So anyway, um, and then we finally got money to help build the Gillespie Neurosciences Building, which was, uh, you know, partly a, a federal grant funded uh, building grant, which you could get at the time. And that went on and uh, was quite successful. Um, and had several key people. Uh, Andrea Wasserman, who's still with the program, has been the chief administrator and has just done a marvelous job of making us function as a unit. <clears throat> and she really gets, she gets a lot of the credit because she's uh, <clears throat> evolved with the program. Also, I'd like to uh, acknowledge Malcolm Dick, who um, really was the first uh, real person who made a commitment to studying Alzheimer's disease and he was doing research on motor learning and had to collect patients for his studies. But in doing that, he realized that he could benefit if we could work together and build a patient population and a center of resource. And um, indeed, that's been done. Uh, initially working with uh, other postdoctoral people like Julian Johnson, who's now at UCSF in their Alzheimer's program. But Malcolm, uh, you know, has uh, done neuropsychology, and here he's playing, a, I think, trying to play where, uh, where's the closest to and which one moved. It's not simple, so it's the idea of sp testing spatial memory. And uh, he also sometimes reads the, the magazines, but in this case, he's learning about exercise and what's come out in the, in the news because we do, we've done some pioneering studies on how exercise can uh, help people. And in fact, there's a, 30, there's a clinical trial now that I'm the co-PI of with Laura Baker that is studying the effect of uh, aerobic versus uh, stretching and toning on people. It's a one-year tr uh, one trial and will be uh, f finished enrolling in, uh, in December. And we've done really well. We've, uh, for a, a study that requires four days a week of commitment from people, We've enrolled like over 240 people so far, and so we'll be able to complete this. And this will be, the, we hope, one of the first behavioral interventions that actually will improve cognitive function and make the brain healthier. From all the animal studies, it should be productive. Um, and, and also other people like Pat Keslock was a really cornerstone of the program in its early years. Uh, some staff people like Joanna Chrysler, she was terrific because everybody loved her. And she was pulled the patients together, gave us a center of uh, friendship and hope and optimism. And so that was, it. and then also other people that have, uh, the Institute has built a sustained workforce. Andrea Wasserman I mentioned before. There's also Luder Lou and Judy Nichols who are, uh, keep track of the fi funds and everything and keep us from ever being audited. And that's been wonderful and frankly she's 
I don't think she's made a mistake, which to say something and, and makes us follow the rules. Uh, Dan Hong and uh, Dean Maddie who do um, the data management and computer uh, thing. And then two nurses, Catherine Ortiz and uh, Beatrice Vitas have been with us for quite a number of years and have been extremely uh, uh, cornerstones of the program. So, um, then we have the memory walk where we practice exercise plus friendship and, so, and socialization and that's got all the ingredients of successful aging. So, I, it's been an honor and a pleasure to work with everyone here and let's move forward and get this uh, disease under control. Thank you.